Hi friends, welcome to another session in biomolecules. We are dealing today with storage polysaccharides. You know that the polysaccharides carbohydrates are divided into monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are the sugars which contain more than 10 monosaccharide units. Let's study one by one. This is classification of polysaccharides. They are divided into mainly three types. Storage polysaccharides, structural polysaccharides and mucopolysaccharides. This storage polysaccharides, they are examples for them. Popular examples are starch, glycogen and inulin. Coming to the structural polysaccharides, the popular examples are cellulose, chitin and pectin. Mucopolysaccharides, the main examples what we are telling here are heparin, hyaluronic acid and chondritin sulfate. Remember, polysaccharides are called glycons. These glycons can also be divided into homoglycons and heteroglycons. Homoglycons are the polysaccharides which are made of only one type of sugar. For example, if you see this store starch, glycogen, inulin, starch is made of only glucose, likewise glycogen, likewise inulin is made of only fructose and cellulose is made of glu uh, glucose units. And these are called homopolysaccharides. Usually storage and structural polysaccharides, they are mainly homopolysaccharides made of only one type of sugar. Whereas this one, mucopolysaccharides are also considered as heteropolysaccharides because on hydrolysis, they yield more than one type of sugar. Why they yield? Because they are made of more than one type of sugar. That is why they are called as heteroglycons. This is about simply the classification of polysaccharides. In this session, we are concentrating only on storage polysaccharides. These are the sugars which store reserve food materials in both plants and animals. Whenever there is storage of food material, they are called as storage polysaccharides. The examples which we are going to see in this session are starch, glycogen and inulin. Starch and glycogen you are very familiar. Starch is present in plants which is the reserve food material uh, which is resulting uh, due to the photosynthesis. Glucose is formed during photosynthesis. Glucose units all are joined to form the starch. Likewise glycogen in case of animals and inulin in case of some plants all these are nothing but storage polysaccharides we will see one after another our first storage polysaccharide is starch it is a homopolymer of glucose also called a homoglycon of glucose and it is the reserve food material in plants and this starch grains they are arranged in the concentric layers in the grains see these are the examples of some of the starch grains the first one is starch grain of potato and the second one is wheat starch grain and the third one is maize likewise banana and so on these are different starches present in the tubers as well as in some grains just by looking under the microscope observing the concentric rings we can identify the source from which it is isolated and these starches they contain two parts one is the amylose another one is amylopectin any starch contains two parts what are they amylose and amylopectin whenever the starch grains or starch is boiled the central part dissolves and it passes out this dissolved central portion it is soluble form and this is also called as amylose so where is amylose present at the 
central region of the starch grain this central region of the starch grain what it contains it contains the amylose amylose on boiling it dissolves and it occupies the inner core of the starch grain and the peripheral region insoluble portion it is called as amylopectin this peripheral portion it absorbs water and it swells remember the starch grains uh, rice grains whenever they are boiled whenever we are cooking rice we get the mass you know that mass is because of the amylopectin generally this starch grain entire starch grain it contains 10 to 20 percent of amylose and 80 to 90 percent of amylopectin amylopectin occupies the major portion in the starch grain and on complete hydrolysis it gives what the starch gives glucose and partial hydrolysis gives maltose partial hydrolysis means it, whenever it is broken down here and there it results in the formation of maltose and dextrins dextrins are nothing but molecules of glucose three or more glucose units small number of glucose units whenever they are obtained after the hydrolysis they are called as dextrins so on complete hydrolysis the starch gives glucose because it is made of glucose completely whenever it is hydrolyzed that means after every sugar whenever it is broken down we obviously get the glucose on partial hydrolysis we get maltose as well as dextrins hope it is clear to you and now this is the structure of starch remember in the previous slide I told you that the starch is made of two components one is amylose the core portion which dissolves and another is amylopectin their structure is also mildly they are varying remember amylose is made of starch is made of entirely glucose you know that and these are all the glucose units one after another where they are linked by 1,4 glycosidic linkage where in amylose that means amylose is a linear polysaccharide many number of glucose units are joined one after another with only 1,4 glycosidic linkage wherever you see there are 1,4 linkages only then that results in the formation of amylose let's go to the amylopectin these are very very simple structure if you can understand the formation of glycosidic linkages and you have seen the structure of maltose then it is very easy to understand starch storage polysaccharides let's go to amylopectin apart from see here this lower line is entirely is nothing but amylose like structure linear chain apart from this linear structure it also contains some branches the branches are the result of formation of alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage see here the this is one amylose chain and this is another amylose chain they are linked by another extra bond which is nothing but one six glycosidic linkage this is the first carbon and this is the sixth carbon sixth carbon we will see there is the oh group first carbon below there is the oh group and water molecule is removed and the glycosidic linkage is formed resulting in one six glycosidic linkage so this amylose is linear amylopectin is branched and it contains 1,6 linkage in addition to 1,4 linkage let's see let's recap the structure once again we know that the starch is homopolymer of glucose and alpha d glucose units are linked by one four linkages in amylose amylose is as i told you it is unbranched amylopectin is branched why the branches resulted it is because of the involvement or formation of one six linkage in addition to the one four linkage amylose usually gives blue black color with iodine whereas amylopectin results in violet to red color with the iodine and amylases are the enzymes that break or hydrolyze the starch amylases they act on starch and gives maltose 
and uh, see here this is the these two are nothing but the structures of uh, amyl uh, starch grains this is the amylose portion and this is the amylopectin portion amylopectin is branched amylose is the linear chain and you can also see the structure of glycogen glycogen is vigorously branched and it is just like the amylopectin which we are going to see in our next slide and listen amylases are the enzymes that hydrolyze or break the starch and amylases are present both in the plants animals and also in the bacteria these are these amylase enzymes can be divided into alpha amylases as well as beta amylases and gamma amylases as we are not dealing with the amylases just i'll just give you brief idea alpha amylases or pancreatic amylase salivary amylase animal based usually they are also present in the plants and beta amylases are usually plant based and they always beta amylases they give maltose on hydrolysis they give maltose only whereas the alpha amyloses amylases they give maltose as well as dextrins the gamma amylases they are used to digest end components of the sugar at the end whatever that are left over they are digested by the gamma amylases this is about the starch hope starch structure and properties are very clear to you once starch is very clear to you it is very very easy to understand the structure of glycogen just simply the structure of amylopectin is nothing but the structure of glycogen let's see it is glycogen is also a storage polysaccharide but in case of animals in animals the glycogen is stored in two organs mainly one is the liver another one is muscle and as you already know it is a homoglycan because it is made of only one type of sugar which is nothing but d glucose units there may be many number thousands and thousands of sugars but all of them belong to d glucose one type of sugar that is why it is called as homoglycan and these d glucose units they are joined by one four linkages and one six linkages in addition to one four linkages that is why it results i mean it is just like that of the amylopectin but it is more branched vigorous branching as we have seen in our previous figure there is vigorous branching is observed in case of glycogen so this is the structure of glycogen this is usually 1414 linkages and here and there there are 16 linkages but compared to amylopectin they are more branched structure or present in the glycogen usually a linear chain of 8 to 12 followed by branches 8 to 12 again followed by branches it is just like the structure of amylopectin but with vigorous branching it is very very easy to learn here also you will see vigorous branching of the glycogen chain is observed and as i already told you that the glycogen is stored in the liver and muscle in compact form and glycogen particles they are spherical in shape they act as reserve food material during fasting at least one day reserves of glycogen are present in every individual whenever we are, we are go on fast the first food material that is utilized is the glycogen from the liver as well as from the muscle that's about glycogen yes after discussing starch and glycogen we are now moving on to another homopolysaccharide which is nothing but inulin inulin is also a storage polysaccharide but it is uh, found in the tubers of chicory dahlia and in the bulb of onion it usually a white crystalline powder and is made of d fructose units interesting and it is very easily hydrolyzed by acids and soluble in hot water does not give any characteristic color with the iodine like that of starch these are some of the properties of inulin 
this shows you the structure of inulin inulin is made of fructose units see here this is one fructofuranose another fructofuranose this is the c1 carbon the first carbon and the linkage is 1 2 linkage and again there is 1 2 linkage likewise this 1 2 linkage you will see everywhere this 1 2 linkage this is the first carbon first carbon and there is OH here second carbon the linkage is 1 2 linkage between each and every fructose units and it continues hence it is the homopolymer of D fructose units inulin polysaccharide is also broken down by an enzyme called inulinase do not confuse with insulin inulin is a homopolysaccharide insulin is the hormone secreted by the pancreas both are different it is present in plants inulin present in plants insulin is present in animals inulin it is hydrolyzed by the enzyme inulinase and it is levorotatory in nature because you know that the fructose is highly levorotatory in nature and it is unbranched there are no branches in the structure of the inulin the linkage is always beta 1 2 between two fructose units and this inulin the importance is it is used as commercial source for fructose as till now we have seen three types of storage polysaccharide one is starch glycogen and inulin these are storage polysaccharide and all of them are homopolysaccharides or homoglycons starch is storage polysaccharide in plants composed of d-glucose units and starch grain contains myelopectin amylose and amylopectin containing alpha 14 and alpha 16 linkages the glycogen is storage polysaccharide in animals composed of d-glucose and this structure i told you it is similar to amylopectin with alpha 14 and alpha 16 linkages inulin is Another storage polysaccharide found in plants contains D-glucose linked by beta-1-2 linkage which is used as commercial source of fructose. So viewers, stay on this slide where you feel difficult and understand it clearly and write to me in the comment section if you have any doubts. I am ready to clarify. Thanks for watching.